Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we're gonna be doing a review of the CeraVe Hydrating Sunscreen Sheer Tint. So I have already talked about their hydrating sunscreen that does not have a tint. I will put a card here for the video where I talk through that and also link it below, but I will bring up a couple points and kind of compare and contrast these two aside from the obvious difference in the tint in this video if you guys are interested. If you guys wanna see how that applies on my face, I do two full applications of this tinted sunscreen and then I show you how makeup wears on top of it. And then of course we'll talk through ingredients and all of that per usual. So if you wanna hear my overall review, stay tuned. We're gonna jump right into that. Before we do, if you could please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and click on that notification bell. That would help me out a lot and really mean a lot to me because I upload three to five days a week for you guys. And if you're interested in more content from me, definitely go follow me on Instagram and TikTok. Handles are right there for you. All right, let's jump into it. All right, so let's just talk through some of the high level details of this sunscreen. So this you are getting 1.7 fluid ounces and it retails for $15.99. Roughly, it's a little bit different depending on which retailer you purchase it at, of course, but that's like on average what I was seeing online. Compared to the untinted version, this one has 2.5 fluid ounces in it and retails for about $14.99. So a dollar price point difference, but you're definitely getting more product in here. So keep that in mind, this one is a little bit pricier. This sunscreen has mineral active ingredients only, and those are 5.5% titanium dioxide, as well as 10% zinc oxide. So that's awesome. There are no chemical filters in this sunscreen. Same goes for this. The percentages of each are a little bit different, but they're both completely mineral. This one is completely fragrance-free, of course, like CeraVe's entire brand is. There are no sensitizing plant extracts, no concerning ingredients, nothing within this formulation that is known to be a sensitizer or an irritant. So that's great. This really should be safe for all skin types. Of course, there might be specific skin types that prefer the formulation over others, but there shouldn't be anything in here that's an issue if you have sensitive skin, but the only way to know if it works for you or not is to actually test it out. And then on the front, they say that this is supposed to blend seamlessly into the skin for a lightweight, non-greasy feel, and that it has three essential ceramides and niacinamide in it. So we've talked about ceramides here quite a few times before on this channel and specifically as it relates to CeraVe because that is their signature ingredient, I would say. And ceramides are just really amazing skin restoring ingredients. So always love to see that, but that's nothing new for CeraVe. That's what you're going to get in this, did I say CeraVe? Oh, I feel like I catch myself sometimes saying CeraVe when I know it's pronounced CeraVe, but I said CeraVe for so long, it's like ingrained. But same thing here, this also has three essential ceramides and niacinamide, so it's not like that is a standout within this formulation. So love that this sunscreen has niacinamide in it. I get very excited whenever I see that in a sunscreen because not only does niacinamide have a lot of amazing skin benefits, like improving the appearance of pores, improving texture, anti-aging, all of these different amazing things. It also helps to control sebum production. And I find that often with mineral SPFs, they can, at least on me, because I have combo skin that leans oily, start to look oily throughout the day. So when I have an ingredient in there that helps to combat that, I always prefer that over not having that ingredient at all, especially within a mineral formulation. And then aside from the niacinamide, we have a lot of other ingredients in here that we typically see within CeraVe skincare products that are amazing for the skin. So some of those are hyaluronic acid to help with surface level hydration. We also have cholesterol in here, which sounds weird, but it's a skin replenishing emollient that's really incredible to have in a moisturizer or a hydrating skincare product like this. And then we also have tocopherol in this formulation, which is vitamin E, an antioxidant that has great skin benefits. One of the biggest differences within this ingredient list when you compare it to the non-tinted version is that this has iron oxides in it, which of course makes sense. I've said this before, but in case you missed it, iron oxides sides are what add pigment slash color to cosmetics and skincare, but not only are they going to be responsible for adding that tint or color to this sunscreen, they're also going to further protect our skin and actually protect our skin better than the same exact sunscreen will without iron oxides because they more effectively protect our skin from developing melasma and hyperpigmentation and also from the longer waves of UVA rays. So really great that CeraVe now has a sunscreen that has iron oxides in it because we are getting more effective protection from 
those things I just talked about. Another ingredient that I found within this formulation that was not in the untinted formulation is that this actually has salicylic acid in it. Salicylic acid is a very effective anti-acne ingredient because it helps to dissolve dead skin cells that eventually clog our pores and lead to the formation of breakouts. I think a lot of people think about salicylic acid in relation to acne, but salicylic acid also has other benefits as well. And some of those benefits include that it may help to soothe and calm aggravated skin. It may help to brighten skin tone and improve the appearance of uneven skin tone. So we have an overall improved complexion. One thing I did want to bring up is that salicylic acid is a form of of a BHA and with BHAs stinging and burning with use is definitely not uncommon. However, a lot of the times when that's happening, it's with products that have high amounts of salicylic acid or higher amounts than I think we would find within this sunscreen. So salicylic acid is definitely not within the top five or even 10 ingredients within this sunscreen, meaning it's not one of the dominant ingredients within the formulation. And you have to kind of think about those other products like their salicylic acid renewing cleanser, and I'm pretty sure they have a renewing lotion or moisturizer with that those are going to have more salicylic acid in them than this sunscreen. So I definitely have had a little bit of stinging and burning with their salicylic acid cleanser if I use it too frequently. I don't have any issues with this. Of course, this we actually are leaving on our skin versus that cleanser you're removing with water after you use it, but still. I've never had an issue with this. It doesn't irritate my skin at all. I've used it so many times. So I wanted to bring that up just in case you were concerned. Of course, everyone's skin is different and maybe it will be slightly irritating for you, but I don't think it's enough to where it should be an issue. And I have very sensitive skin. It's not been a problem for me. Of course, I don't work for CeraVe. There's no way for me to actually know the exact amount of salicylic acid that's in this versus some of their other salicylic acid products but that's just kind of what I'm assuming because those products specifically have salicylic acid in the title of the product and it's very much called out on the front. It is a salicylic acid cleanser or a salicylic acid moisturizer. This doesn't even call that out on the front, you know? So that's kind of just how I'm thinking of it. So those are all of the ingredients that I specifically wanted to highlight within this sunscreen. Of course, those are not the only ingredients in this sunscreen. There are many more that are great for the skin, but right off the bat with the ones that I did read for you guys, we have some really awesome ingredients and all things I was excited to see within a sunscreen, especially because we don't have anything concerning within this ingredient label. Okay, now let's talk through the actual consistency, formulation of the sunscreen, how it applies, all of that stuff. So this definitely is not the thinnest mineral sunscreen I have ever used. It is a bit thicker and... Mm, I'm trying to think of exactly how to describe this. It does feel nice, it does feel very hydrating on the skin, but it feels a tiny bit greasier than some of the other mineral sunscreens that I've reviewed here on this channel. So keep that in mind if you're somebody that wants a really liquidy, thin, runny mineral sunscreen formulation, you're not gonna like this, you're not gonna get that at all with this, but I'm somebody that usually prefers that really liquidy, thin sunscreen, and I still really like this. I like how it feels on the skin. Even though it's a little bit greasier and thicker, it doesn't feel like my skin is weighed down. I don't feel it sitting on my skin necessarily. It's nothing that bothers me. So I'm okay with it. I do like this formulation. It's not my absolute favorite, but I think it's good. However, compared to some of the other mineral sunscreens that I've talked through, this one definitely has one of the most predominant tints as far as the color and coverage goes. So it still is not going to be the same level as a CC cream or a foundation, but it's much closer than some of my other tinted mineral sunscreens that just have a tint to remove the white cast and don't really add any additional color. So I actually really like this. And one of the reasons that I love that is because when I self tan in the summer, because I don't lay out and tan, and I'm not laying out in the sun in that way, but I love to have a little summer glow. You know, so when I do that, I don't put self tanner on my face. I'm so particular about my skincare products on my face. It's just not something I want left on my face, especially to sleep in overnight. And anyway, self tanner rubs off on my face within a day and a half to two days. So there's no point either way for me. It's a lose-lose. So I just don't put self tanner on my face. And because of that, as you guys can see in this clip, my face is much lighter than the rest of my body. So this actually really helps me to balance that out, which is much appreciated. So within one application of this, I already get a really good amount of color that helps to balance out my pale face 
versus myself tan and then just even more so with the second application I do just get some additional color and then I feel like I look pretty even I'm gonna have to check back on this footage and actually see because maybe I won't feel that way when I see it but I feel like this does add a good amount of color and this blends very nicely into the skin it rubs in really well I don't have any issues with it kind of clinging to areas or streaking or anything like that it does blend in nicely with the second application it's not my favorite to have two applications of this sunscreen on top of each other I feel like it just it doesn't look quite as nice as just one application so how I actually prefer to wear this is with an untinted sunscreen underneath it and then I just put this on top of it then I don't feel like it's too much I don't know I hope you guys will be able to see and it picks up here on camera what I'm talking about I just feel like it doesn't look the best with multiple layers so Still is a great option for something to put on top of an untinted sunscreen and this is really great because it helps to remove the white cast that other mineral sunscreens that I have leave on my skin. It has actually enough tint to be able to cut that white cast. So if you're looking for a sunscreen that is going to add a good amount of color to either just wear on its own or to help to cut white cast from other sunscreens, this is gonna be a great option. And then overall finish of this definitely is very radiant. It doesn't dry down fully matte on me you can see here within this clip I think this was like 20 minutes after I applied it it still has a clear glow to it it's definitely dewy so I feel like if you had really oily skin you would not love this unless you were wearing it underneath makeup and powder on its own it just doesn't fully dry down matte which I prefer because I don't like extremely matte skin I want life to my skin but I know that that's not going to be for everyone and it's definitely going to depend on your skin type so I think if you have dry skin normal skin even combo skin like me that can lean oily this could definitely work for you if you're super oily I don't feel like you would love this and just because it does have that little bit of a thicker consistency I feel like if you had very oily skin you would probably want something that's thinner and maybe has more of a powdery finish so I actually did recently do an updated affordable sunscreen review with a few different sunscreens one of those I feel like you would love if you had oily skin I'll put a card for it here and link it below but it just has that lighter weight almost powdery finish where you're not going to get that here so totally up to you and your skin type and your preferences I feel like everyone has different preferences when it comes to a sunscreen formulation so you guys will have to let me know in the comments below if you have this do you love the formula of it is it not for you I'm very curious what's your sunscreen type and then finally, the last point I wanted to talk about with application and formulation is how makeup applies on top of it. I see so many of you guys ask questions about that. We have a lot of makeup wearers out there. Hi, I'm clearly a makeup wearer as well. Not all the time, but if I'm wearing makeup, I'm going like full glam like this. And it's very important to me that I have a sunscreen that sits well underneath makeup and doesn't start to pill up when I apply foundation and concealer and powder and bronzer and blush and highlight you know so this works very well for me underneath makeup it does not pill at all it doesn't make my makeup streak or get patchy it doesn't cling to any areas you guys can see it just looks really nice my foundation blends on top of it like a dream and that is the L'Oreal Infallible 24-hour Freshwear foundation one of my all-time favorites it's beautiful and it works really well with this and I do like how this continues to wear on my skin underneath makeup throughout the day if I am wearing it because it has that more radiant finish I feel like it just continues to help make my skin look lifelike throughout the day even if I have a lot of setting powder on if I maybe went in with too heavy of a hand my skin just still looks like it has life to it you know what I mean so this is makeup wearer approved it also works well without makeup like I said though it's not my favorite with multiple applications so this is not one that I continue to reapply on top of itself throughout the day like I would not do four to five reapplications of this I just feel like by the end of the day the color gets to be too dark and orange and it just doesn't look great so I may do this for one to two applications and then after that reach for a different sunscreen for further reapplications and then I forgot to say the actual color of this tint while it does definitely lean warm toned I don't feel that it looks too orange I know that that's definitely a concern for some people I have warm toned skin so it's kind of hard for me to say but even when I lay it down on my hand which is a little bit orange right now from self tanner and start to blend it out I'll show you guys I'm seeing a little bit of pink in there and beige as well which is a good thing because that means it's going to be 
more universal. Yeah, see? So I do feel like that could work on different skin tones, but again, it's gonna just depend. This is probably not going to work for you though if you are trying to just rely on sunscreen and you have very fair skin because the tint is very apparent, like I said, more so than most of the other mineral sunscreens that I own. So keep that in mind. Probably not for you if you have very fair skin, unless you have fair skin like me with a self tan, so. All right, you guys, so that is everything I wanted to talk through with this sunscreen. I think it's such a good affordable option, and while it's not the most affordable option out there, it still, of course, is more affordable than some other sunscreens I've talked through on this channel and that just exist within the sunscreen space. So I really like it, and I think if you like this kind of formulation within a sunscreen, if you're looking for one that has a good amount of tint to it, I feel like you will fall in love with this. So that's that's everything. You guys will have to let me know in the comments below. Do you have this? What are your thoughts? Are you interested in purchasing this after watching this video? Keep me posted. We can chat in the comments below. As always, if there's anything else you would like to see from me next on this channel, leave that in the comments as well. I would love to do that for you. Otherwise, my next video will be up in a few days. So until then, I hope you have a great few days.